treasure seekers we are back once again as y'all can see i've got some pretties laid out here before you now what is this coin lot now this is an ebay coin lot but this is more a constitutional silver coin lot so i purchased this out on ebay and i'm going to show you exactly what it is and remember everybody i will leave the links in the description tab so right here we have absolutely the best coin lot deal on ebay all silver pre-1904 dollar in every lot pre-1904 dollar in every lot that's what hooked me no sense no nicks no junk so what they're saying is this is all pre-64 silver and they're not throwing in any any nickels to catch at 35 percent now this is 180 dollars and 45 cents and i bought two of these so it run me right at 361 dollars 360.90 so let's go down here to the description and as you can see quite a few of these have been sold so there's there's quite a few of these been sold and this is the second listing so, absolute best unsearched coin lot available on eBay for pre-65 silver coins, period. Uh, and this just goes into the buy now price and what you're looking at. Unlike other bulk lots sold on eBay, there is absolutely no filler. Wheat pennies, war nickels, 40 halves in our lots. All coins are pre-1965, 90% solid U.S. unsearched coinage. Add to that, our silver coins are mostly collectible numismatic grade and not just coal melt value silver like others offer. And you will quickly see why we are so excited to offer this product for your consideration. Your and I have found that to be exactly true, everybody. Sorry about that. This is mostly numismatic value coins. That's why you're seeing a Troy Pound a little expensive. As we have had many requests to offer only pre-65 silver coinage from this large hoard and skip the nickel and copper coins, we are answering with this fantastic offer. This is exactly the same full half pound groups that many buyers have enjoyed over the past year or so, often finding many rare and high grade coins from this same hoard. The only difference here is for these lots. I will instruct my helpers to pull out all non-silver coins <clears throat> so that each and every group via this offering will contain only pre-65 U.S. silver coins. Yes, you read this correctly. For each purchase slot, you will get a full half pound, eight full U.S. ounces of truly unsearched U.S. collectible silver coinage from this original hoard, plus this is unheard for any bonus each and every lot is guaranteed to contain at least one 100 plus 100 plus euro genuine pre-1904 morgan silver dollar in collectible grade so absolutely awesome i mean already the description got me before i ever bought it and as i've got this laid out here everybody this is just some of what was in my first slot and yes, every bit of this was in my first lot. So my first lot, and this ain't all of it. I just wanted to give you a little precursor to what we're going to get into this. And remember, I will do a full breakdown. Now, I've got something else pulled up that I want y'all to be very wary. This is for a half pound lot. <clears throat> I will leave the link in the description. If you're thinking about picking this up, be careful. Use my link for this lot. The seller also sells in pounds and five pounds and 10 pounds. So use this link. If you're going through eBay searching, there is other lots that are kindly mimicked to this, but I'm going to show you a lot bigger difference with those. So that we do have other lots here on eBay. Let me show you why I want you to be careful. As y'all can see, this one, and it is Sun Coins. Uh, okay, work with me. It's 180.45. Now I've got another tab saved up here. 
where you're getting one troy pound of U.S. mixed silver coins. No junk pre-65. Listen to this, everybody. This is why I tell you to be careful. This is 170. They also have one on there for 159. You're thinking you're getting this deal, right? Let's be very worried. Look here in the title. Silver, one troy pound U.S. mixed silver coins. No junk pre-65. <clears throat> I want y'all to remember that. And this is why you need to be very wary when buying coin lots, especially constitutional silver on eBay. Look at getting one troy pound for 170 bucks. I just get 360 for a troy pound. Okay, so already there's something that sounds up. And this is why I warn y'all to be very, very, very careful. Right here, this, in, this lot includes one troy pound of U.S. silver. Overall, you will be receiving a total of 84 coins. This coin lot you're receiving will consist of the following coins. Two total Walking Liberty or Franklin Kennedy and or Barber Dimes has 90%. So you get two half dollars. Four total mixed silver standing liberty and or Washington quarters. So four Washington quarters. 23 Mercury, Roosevelt, Barber Dimes. Okay. Now, here you go. Most of your coinage is going to be Barber and Roosevelt. And a total of 55, 42 through 45 Jefferson War Nichols, 35%. Most of this coin lot you're getting is 35% War Nichols. So this isn't the deal that they're letting out. Now, their description is right. The war nickels are pre-64. There's also another one that is doing the same thing, guaranteeing no junk, no filler. That's most of their coinage is war nickels and Kennedys. I actually have it saved to show you. So be careful. Read your descriptions. Right here, the bulk of this lot is going to be 35% silver. And right now, you can get a full tube of war nickels two dollars for near nothing i give 40 bucks for a four full tube of war nickels so uh, this is not the deal it looks to be so you're not getting a whole lot of silver two halves four quarters 23 barber dimes and 55 war nickels just wanted to say wanted to be, let y'all kindly be wary of that to be Watch these deals that sound too good to be true because generally uh, they are. So, now y'all know exactly what it is and what I give. Let's look at the price per ounce on this lot. And you will know why I say this is a little expensive. This right here was a full pound 16 ounces silver is at about 15.65 now it was a little lower when i purchased this i am giving 22 dollars and 50 cents per ounce of silver now that's about 685 over spot right now so that's a pretty high premium on silver everybody it, it really is that's the way it is right now Premiums on silver is high. Uh, I have found some ounce generic silver rounds for about 18 through $20. <clears throat> but after shipping, you're still giving up here to $22 to $25 per ounce of silver. That's what silver is going for right now. We're in a rough economic state. The demand is much higher than the supply, which has drove the price up. Therefore. We will go over this in the end of the video. But right now, you know we get $22.50 per ounce. We got a full pound. <clears throat> we have new smatic value here. Trust me. So we'll give a full breakdown. Let's see if this is or isn't a good lot. I will say I did rather enjoy my first lot. Loved it a lot. I've talked a lot. Let's shut her down. Let's come back. Let's open some coins. Let's have some fun, everybody. We'll be back here soon. All right. Here we go. 
This is the exciting part of the video. Time to open her up. Now this is what we've been waiting for. All my rambling, all my talking has come down to this very moment. And here we go. Dun, dun, dun. All right, here we are. And we have the sheet saying, what I got. Now, time to pour out. Double bag. Now, my last one wasn't double bagged, and I will tell everybody that this one I actually had to sign for, where the first one I didn't. But I'm telling you, there's some weight there. <clears throat> this is so fun. Now, this isn't buying one of the estate lots. This is buying silver. And remember, everybody, on this, there's not going to exactly be a face value because you are buying by weight. So, we haven't got a face value. Look at this. This is packaged so much better than my last one. My last one, I had a problem. It was just wrapped in plastic wrap. This one is actually packaged rather nicely. So, I really like this packaging a lot better than I did my first one. And am I going to be able to break into it? Oh. See, in my excitement, we just get all types of... There we go. Here we go. Now, for the moment of truth. Do we have another package? Oh, there we are. And now these, this one come in bags. Ooh. Look at that, Franklin. So what is going on with that? That looks like either PVC or tape. Don't know that I'm so happy with that one. But here is our packages. All right, let's open one of these up. Let's kindly go through this and see what we got. And now I will come back and I'll have each lot laid out. What I'm looking for first is the half dollar. Ooh. Oh, look at there. And here's what I want to dig out. This is our Morgan. What have we got? A 1901 and about, I would call this very fine. First off, I see a beautiful 1964. We got a 1964 Kennedy. And what I'm going to do is we'll open both of these up. And I'll give a break. I'll come back and I'll have each lot set out by each denomination and each type. So I'll have the Franklin separated, the Walker separated. And I am looking for this Franklin that had the tape on the back. Oh, that's so disappointing. That is so disappointing because that is, look at the obverse of this, everybody. 1963, somebody had this one tape. And I am, uh, wow, that's just eat the coin. I am getting some NMS 70 cleaner. I might try to soak this one in acetone. I really hate the condition on this one. Somebody had this taped in a book, and that is very unfortunate. So this is more than likely PVC glue. Uh, <clears throat> the only thing I know is to dip it in acetone and then clean it with MS-70. As it sets right now, this is just worth its silver weight. I couldn't give it no more than that. But let's open our second one. Because my last package, the silver dollar was a much better silver dollar and much better condition. So... Let's see what we get out of this one. All right, let's look for our Morgan here. 
we have a 1989 New Orleans in about the same condition. And I'm going to tell everybody as of right now, I'm a little more disappointed in this lot than I was my first one. Let me dig out my Morgan Silver Dollar from my first lot. Pull this back. This was my first Morgan Silver Dollar. And this was more than just, I mean, look at this, 1889. Look at this beauty. So we still got details in the feathers. We have nowhere. My first Morgan Silver Dollar was a mint state, 1889. So actually has good value here. These two, not as much. Where my first Morgan was about a $50 coin, these, you know, I might could sell them for $35, but I'm going to say $25 value on those. But I'm not going to dwell on that. I'm going to get both of these lots separated by denomination, by type, and let's see what we got in this lot. When we come back, we'll have two neat little stacks. All right, everybody, we'll be back here soon. All right, everybody, we are back. Please forgive my glare. I've been working with my lights. I'm having problems with it. So what did we get out of these two lots? And as y'all can see, I've got them separated. First lot, we got the 1901 Morgan Dollar. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus. There we go. We got the 1901. Then... We got four Walking Liberty halves. Beautiful. So $2 in Walking Liberty halves. We got four Franklin half dollars or $2. And my di big disappointment of this lot, everybody, is this 1963 Denver Mended Franklin. If you look at the Obverse, this is a mint state coin. The reverse kills it. But I am going to try to soak this in acetone and see if we can't pull this glue off where somebody had it taped to a book. But uh, if that's the only disappointment, we're doing really good. Then we got the 1964 Kennedy. There is some scratching, but there is no wear. I would still consider this a low mint state coin. And we will be checking for varieties. Then we got a dollar seventy five in Washington quarters, and look at this sixty four. We got two or fifty cents in standing Liberty quarters, a nineteen twenty eight and a nineteen thirty. So as y'all can see, there's a nice variety in this. Then we got fifty cents. In Roosevelt Dimes. And yet again, I've put the best ones on top, or the mint state conditions. Mercury Dimes. We got 10 or $1 in Mercury Dimes. And then, to round off lot number one, one Barber Dime. So as y'all can see, really nice mix of coins. A lot of them's decent condition. A lot of them's good condition. We'll go through that a little later. Lot number two, we had the 1889 New Orleans Minted. And this is one I don't have in my collection, so I'll be glad to add this one. Then for the real big surprise out of this one, we got one Barber Half Dollar. Now this might be a G4 good condition. It is showing some signs of wear. But in good condition, a G4, this would go 17 bucks. We'll get into that a little later. Now, walking liberties. Yet again, we got four or two dollars worth. Benjamin Franklin's, we got three or a dollar fifty worth. And then, yet again, another 90% Kennedy. On the quarters, 
all of our quarters this time were Washington quarters, and we got nine Washington quarters. The nicest being the 1963. Block two, we got five or 50 cent in Rosie's, Roosevelt Dimes. And look at that 54. So there is some nicer coinage in here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't like the packing as much. That's where you're getting these residual scratches. I would like to see a little better packaging. But I'm not complaining because, yet again, this is constitutional silver, everybody. So the Mercury Dimes, we got 80 cents or 8 in Merc Dimes. And then... To round off lot number two, we got two Barber Dimes. All right. Now, let's go in the price for each one of these lots. How I'm going to do this, and I am going to go through every one of these. I am going to look for Vams on the Morgans. I'm going to look for Varieties. I'm going to look for Double Dyes. Uh, the 1964 Kennedys have some Double Dyes that could bring a little more money. The quarters have double dies, the dimes, so we're going to go through every bit of that. If I find varieties, I'll pull those to the side and give a separate value. The value, I'm not going to go through and value each coin unless it fits a really nice or a variety, then we'll give a separate value. But I'll give you the value of the $2 in uh, Walking Liberties. I'll give you the values in the Franklins, and I'm going to value this one. probably at g4 to silver spot because right now that's a call every other one of them will hold new smiley value and i will give you the value on that so you'll get the dollar you'll get the walking liberties you'll get the kennedys and that's going to be a total value of each coin here then how are we doing value usa red book and please remember, everybody, that this is Red Book. This is top value. They go through each year by the auctions and what each coin is sold for. And they take a silver spot in consideration. So this will give us a good starter collector value. Please remember, this is collector value. This is not what I would get if I went to sell these. Generally, I like to take what I get from Red Book drop 20% to 30% off the price, and that gives me almost gray sheet. Now, I could sell these individually for more to a collector than I would a dealer. So, collector value and dealer value is two separate things. We are using the 2020 Red Book, which is more of a collector value. That's how we're getting value. Well, value doesn't do no good without grading. So, how am I going to grade these? I'm not a pneumocyst. Therefore, we also have the official American Numismatic Association graded standards for United States coins. This is a brand new, it is an official Whitman guide, and this is absolutely amazing. Everybody, if you're in coins, I recommend you get these two books. Absolutely, positively get these two books. It will help you if you are a new Numismatic. It will help you if you're a seasoned pro. Now, I really love this book. So each coin, and this new one is just amazing. I'm going to show everybody. Full color. Each grade. It gives you exactly what to look for in each grade. What should and shouldn't be there. It gives you the pictures of how to grade. So the grade I'm going to put on these coins and the value is going to be there. There might be a slight variation in what would actually be graded through PCGS or NGC, but I'm pretty confident in using this, and from what I've seen and what I've sent, that my grading is going to be fairly spot on. I will leave the links for both of these books in the description, along with the monetary value of each one of these coins. So, when we come back, we're going to see if we have any varieties, any dyes. I'm going to give you a value, and remember, the values will be in the description, too. Let's see how good this eBay coin lot, Constitutional Silver, was. 
and going and to saying the only disappointment right now I have is this one half dollar. Now, my last Morgan was much better condition than these, but I'm still very happy. Not very many constitutional silver lots you're going to get dollars, and I'm really, really happy with the barber. <laughs> I love that. So I'm going to... I'm going to quit talking. I have a long road ahead checking every one of these, valuing them. It's going to be a while. So when we come back, y'all get the fruits of my labor. All right, everybody. We will see you back shortly for y'all. A long time for me. All right, treasure hunters and fortune finders, we are back. What did we find? A lot of silver. <laughs> That's to be given. All right, so there's a few things I want to go through before we get started with the final tally and weights. The 1901 Philly is more of a semi-key date and does, in this condition, hold really nice value. Higher conditions, <clears throat> much, much more. These were only minted in about six and a half million, and for the most part, is considered a semi key date. Very cool, huh? So, even in this condition, it's worth a little more than what the other Morgan I got that was in near perfect condition is worth. So, really cool on that one. <clears throat> Going into the quarter. We found a double die. This is a 1964 Philly. It's mint state 63 condition. As y'all can see, beautiful natural mint luster, but there is some scratching on the coin. All the other details are very crisp. It's a beautiful stripe, but this is the DDO, WDDO number five. This is not a cherry pickers recognized DDO. Why do I have it in a hard shell case? Well, because it is a mint state coin, and I generally keep my mint state coins, try to keep them mint state. So we put her in a hard shell. I will get a label for this later. I'm not too particularly fond of this case, but it will serve its purpose right now. So we found a 1964P mint state 63 DDO on to the other Morgan, the 1889 New Orleans Morgan. Love the New Orleans. This would only go about a five, fine 15. I would like to see it in a very fine. It would have made a lot better Morgan. If it was in just a little better condition, I would have been a lot happier, but I'm still not complaining. This Morgan runs about 25 bucks, but it is a VAM. It is a minor, minor VAM. This is the high O, the high oval O. It is a VAM number nine. It's a minor VAM. It doesn't really add no extra value to the Morgan, so, but it is a variety. Then, the Barber Half Dollar, I'm most certainly going to get it put up even though this is only a g4 condition good for it's still close to an 18 dollar coin uh my first really uh barber half dollar i have some seated liberties and things like that but this is my first barber half dollar so it got encapsulated then as y'all know i put my mint state coins in flips or holders. So this is a 1961. It is a Denver, but it is in mint state 63 conditions. So I try to keep my mint state mint state until the point <clears throat> I get an album for these. Then that's a different story. Then they will come out. We didn't have nothing really special in none of the dimes. I really do enjoy the barber dimes, the older dimes, uh, to put them in flips. I would need them in a little better condition. Uh, most of these are in G4 condition. This one would be almost good. Uh, I would call it AG2. So there's still value there. 
This one, I would call it, yeah, G4. Uh, if there was just a little bit of Liberty left, it would be a VG8, but it doesn't quite make it. The standing Liberty quarters are cool, but yet again, condition almost kills them. We did have some of the half dollars in really good condition, but that's enough of the wrap up. Let's go into the monetary part. Lot number one, which contained the semi key date Morgan and the WDDO number five, Mint State 64 quarter. Here is all the numbers, everybody. The Walking Liberties totaled $52. The Kennedys, $11. The Franklins totaled $31, giving a total of the half dollars of $94. The Morgan, and I did put it at a 5 and 15, even though I think it's a very fine 20, $50 on the Morgan. Now, the one Franklin I did do as a call. I did this one as a call, and I just give it silver spot because of this. Later, if I can clean it up and get that off, I might change it. But right now, this was a straight up call, and we only charge silver spot for that. So, the quarters, Washington quarters, we had $37. Standing Liberty quarters, we had $15. Giving us a total of $52 in quarters. Roosevelt dimes, I put most of these at $2 a piece. Uh, some of them in the condition was going $3, $3.50, I just said $2 a piece on every one of them. I know that's what I can sell them for, and I don't want to overshoot the numbers on this. So $12 in Roosevelt's, $20 in Mercury's, and $4 in Barber's, giving us $36. Giving us total of $232. Lot one was $232. 20% of that, say if I got 80% of total value, would be $185. If I got 75% of the value, $175. So really... <clears throat> We got our money's worth. Now, are we making a lot? No. But I do know a lot of these I could sell individually and I could make money on it. There's a lot that would just have to be sold as constitutional silver. But there is some that I could sell over price. So, yes, I did good on this lot. Now, let's go into lot number two because we didn't have that $50 Morgan there. So the Morgan, yet again... VAM 9 high O, and it is the oval O, I put at a fine 15, 25 bucks is what it goes for. I could probably sell it for 30. It is a minor VAM, so it does not add no real extra monetary value. The Walking Liberties, we had $54 in these Walking Liberties. The 1920 was the most expensive. The Franklin's come up to $25, the Kennedy at 11 Now this barber, in G4 condition, 16 bucks. I can probably get 20 out of it. Of course, I don't sell these. I don't want to. These are my babies, but the barber is very cool. 16 bucks. Our half dollars equaled $106 in half dollars. The Washington quarters, we had $55. The Roosevelt dimes, and yet again, these is all put at $2, every one of them. Roosevelt's $10, Mercury dimes $16, and the Barber dimes $6, giving us $32 in dimes, with a total of $218. 80%, or take off 20% of that, gives us a value of $174. 75% of that value is $163. So, what I could sell these for... Not as much, but I still got my money's worth. Very cool. This is a great little lot, especially if you're looking for a wide variety. You're looking at a chance to get some varieties. And you just, you know, you can buy tubes of quarters or just half dollars or just dimes. And you're going to give about the same as what I give here. Well, this, you get a lot better variety. If you're looking for a mix of coins, absolutely go with this one. But do remember... This is constitutional silver. You're more than likely not going to get any key dates. I was surprised to get a Morgan Minute in six and a half millions with that video, uh, value. So 
Just remember, you're buying constitutional silver. All right. This part of the video, everybody, is over. I hope you've enjoyed this. Stick around. I'm going to relay my spread out. And let's talk about silver, silver prices, and if you should or shouldn't buy silver. Should you wait till the price drops or should you buy now? It's a hot topic, a hot debate, and I have my own opinion. But remember, before we start this, everybody has an opinion. Opinions are like rear ends. Everybody has one and most of them stinks. <laughs> so, we'll be right back and we'll talk a little silver. All right, everybody. See you back here soon. All right, treasure seekers and fortune finders. Now for the serious part of the video. Should you buy silver? What's going on with silver right now? And there's a bunch of YouTube videos on this. And everybody has their own opinion. As well as I have mine. So let's go into the logistics of it. At this point, silver is $15.65 an ounce. So it's up there a little bit. Now, personally, I expect it to hit over $19 an ounce. But that's neither here nor there. Why is the amount of silver up? Why is the amount that we give over the premiums so high? Because here's the thing, everybody. Silver is $15.65 an ounce. Generally, you're going to give $22 to $25 plus dollars an ounce. So there is a major, major premium over silver. Especially when you could use to buy it for a dollar or two over an ounce. Well, here's the thing. The economic state of the country, everybody right now is scared. And everybody is buying silver as much as they can. So it's a supply and demand. And yes, there is a slight shortage on silver. Not as bad as what they make it out to be. But because everybody is trying to back up their investment, there is a slight supply problem. Now, does that constitute for what silver is going for? When you have a lot of demand and a lower supply, you're going to have a higher premium. Now, do you buy silver now or not? What's in the future? I foresee, personally, from watching a lot of the markets, that silver is going to hit over $19 an ounce. Now, once it hits 16 there's going to be a slight pull to get it over that $16 hill, but it could really, really skyrocket. Or... It could bottom out. So is it worth giving the premiums over on silver? My answer is, maybe. If you don't have any investment in precious metals in case the dollar does bottom out, yes, I would definitely say buy. Right now, you can't wait for the price to drop because I personally don't foresee it dropping anytime soon. I don't see our economic state getting back anywhere near what it was. And with everybody, all these mines shutting down, less supply, it could take this a while for the premiums to drop. So if you're sitting around waiting for the premiums to drop, it's possibly, probably not going to happen right now. And if the bottom dollar does drop, and you're sitting waiting for the premiums to drop, you've missed your opportunity. Now, as y'all can see, this is just a small, small piece of my stack of silver. I right now can wait because I do have a small collection. And I'd say the ones that does have silver put back or gold, that if you have a nest egg, you can kindly wait and see what happens. Am I still buying silver? Absolutely, 100% and will until I can't. Just because I want that nest egg in case something does happen. So if you've got a stack, you may want to wait for the premiums to drop. Who knows when that could be or if it will at all. There is a complete economic uncertainty and nobody can predict for sure what is going to happen with this. Gold's the same way. Gold, the premium over gold is just ridiculous. I mean, everybody I've always heard, stay away from the coins, buy the silver rounds, buy the silver bars, buy the bullion. Well, 
The bullions cost the same thing as the coins. And this, I'm hoping for extra numismatic value. And I could be wrong because it might come down to that silver price is silver price. There is no extra numismatic value. I don't foresee that happening. That's why I, I personally like the coins. Collect, put back what you like. But I just want to show you here that it's not just one place that the premiums are well over. It's every place. So here we've got eBay, silver rounds, silver bullion, right here, twenty-five oh eight per one ounce. Now remember, fifteen sixty-five is the spot right now, and I want y'all to be very, very, very wary when you see stuff like this. I want you to read exactly what these are. If you see silver selling that spot, be wary, and I want to show you why. I'm sorry for going on, everybody, but I want everybody to know exactly my opinion. So this is one troy ounce silver. Here in the description, German silver is an alloy made up of 60% copper, 20% nickel, and 20% zinc, period. This is not silver at all is not does not contain any silver whatsoever you need to be wary at these at spots it's either silver plated or it's not silver at all fine german silver that's just like selling nordic gold as gold copper and aluminum so be wary of that i just wanted to show y'all that real quick 32 dollars for an ounce 31 dollars per ounce here's a decent price 23.50 and remember I give twenty two fifty on these coins. Here we go into some of the there's twenty three dollars an ounce, thirty dollars for an ounce. This is on a bid, so there's still four days, it's already up to fourteen. Six days, it's already up to fifteen. Thirty two dollars an ounce, twenty seven twenty an ounce. Silver is expensive right now. All right, now let's go to another one of our tabs. And I've got quite a few pulled up here. So let's go to Atmex. Right here. $26.65. And remember, if you don't meet a certain amount, shipping is not free. So we got $30. $108 for 5 ounces. And that's your way to go. If you can't afford higher amounts, you get a little better deal. But in the long run, it might be much harder to sell. So here is the best deal I've seen on here is the 2020 Canadian one ounce silver, 23 bucks. And I mean, it, it goes on and on right here, as you can see, that the quarters. Now, this is a good deal from what I was paying. 144 for $10 in quarters, that's a good deal. For some reason, the numismatic part is starting to drop, which I'm happy about. So 91 bucks for a tube of mercury dimes. Straight mercury dimes. I about got that there. I will in a few weeks. $80 for a tube of Roosevelt dimes. Silver is expensive. But is it worth it? So let's go from Atmex to SD Bullion. And I do believe this is where it no. So right here. A one ounce bar, twenty one thirteen, and you only get free shipping for orders over ninety nine bucks. So please take that in consideration. Twenty three thirteen, twenty sixty three, generic designs. This is a halfway decent deal if you order at least five of them. Twenty three sixty three. So I mean, right here you have some decent prices compared to others. Right here. The Geiger is $17.93. You order five of them, you get a good deal on this. This is one of the better ones I have found. Perth Mint Dragon Silver Bar, $18.13. So there still is deals out there to be had, everybody. There really is. You just have to watch for them. Let's go into JM Bullion. And SD Bullion was the cheapest I'd found it. Here you've got some generic rounds here for 18 and same thing free shipping on 99 dollars or over 
So, I mean, there is still deals to be had, and these are the ones that's in stock. But mostly, you're going to give minimum $5 over spot right now. Picking it up for $18.59, $3 over spot, that's not bad. So, should you buy silver? If you've got a stack and you don't want to give the $3 over premium from what the spot is, I would say no, don't. You know, save your money. If you had to put your money back and go for later, if the price drops, if you don't have any kind of precious metal, any kind of investment, I would say personally, and as y'all can see, try to pick up what you can when you can at the best deal. Shop around. So $3, $3 over spot isn't bad if you can spend 100 It might get to where this stuff is running 12 to 15 dollars over spot right now gold is running about 40 dollars over spot per gram so you know that's why i'm not buying gold at this present point is because the premium is just too much for what you get now gold is less volatile than silver and generally holds a higher spot price but look at what you're giving over on it so, in closing, everybody, I hope I ain't bored you too much. There is economic uncertainty. This might be your saving grace. Then again, I might have spent hundreds of dollars on this to later find out that this isn't worth the hill of beans that I put in it. You know, spot could drop to $7 an ounce. If that happens, I've, I took a major, major loss on it. I don't foresee that happening, but we do not know what is going to happen. Right now, my bet is in silver and gold as a nest egg, and I'm praying that the economy gets better. I would much rather the economy get better and I not have to use this than this be my saving grace. All right, everybody. I think I bored you too much. I'm sorry about this, but there is a lot of videos on this, and I do believe it's imperative that the information gets out. Just keep it in the back of your mind that this is an option. Whether it's best for you, well, that's for you to decide. But AG Coins and Pater has had a wonderful time with this video. I hope you have too. I am going to close it down because I've got a few boxes of quarters to hunt. Until next adventure, everybody. May your pants be full, your smiles be golden, your clouds be silver lined, and your pennies be copper. We'll see you on the next edition, Treasure Seekers.